Brexit! Snigger warning, it's never really going to happen. <laughs> but why? They ask. Why do you feel the need to comment or make fun of Brexit when you don't even live in the UK? Because, sir, part of me still does live there. <laughs> United States of Europe making fun of the EU the American way, this week celebrating 30 years since I first arrived in Europe as an exchange student in London, back when London still thought of itself as Europe. Correction, that was never true. But I still have fond memories. I remember going to see Kenneth Branagh and Emma Thompson in As You Like It in the West End, and this past week, I returned to the West End to see how the theater district is doing in post-Brexit London. Yeah, not, not great. Still, it's nice to see how many things haven't changed since 1988. Or 1888. But of course, the biggest change was in the last couple years with the Brexit vote, when the Leave Europe campaign was all fired up and the Remain campaign was apparently totally devoid of passion. Although, I was in the Remain camp and I got pretty emotional about it. The idea of Britain leaving the EU, I had the same reaction I had when Kenneth Branagh was leaving Emma Thompson. I was like, you can't. You see, I grew up in Chicago as an Anglophile, watching Monty Python, The Young Ones, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, listening to The Jam, The Damned, Madness. And then came the chance for me to study abroad at the City of London University in the only part of town where there is no nightlife. I said, yeah, baby, yeah, 10 years before Austin Powers. I was studying history of Shakespeare back when they were still building the Old Globe Theater, an exact replica of the original Shakespearean stage. I was so in love with Shakespeare. If I'd stayed, I could have been part of Shakespeare in Love. But instead, I chose to exit. You see, Britain, I've made some mistakes along the way, and I don't want to see you repeat them. It was fall of 1988 when we were out on a Sunday exploring, like, Hammersmith, and my roommate says to me, Oh, do you want to go stick around? We can see this concert. It's some rap band from New York. I was like, nah, I gotta get back and study the development of film photography that's the technology of the future. Turns out the band was Public Enemy and the live recording they did that night was used on their album It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. <laughs> oh, all I had to do was remain. I feel like Pete Best in 1962. Do you want to stay in this band with John, Paul, and George? No. What, am I going to be jealous of a guy named Ringo? To be fair, I had reasons for leaving London back then. It was a dirty place. Not just the cigarette smoke, but the soot. The black soot that was everywhere. It got You would take the tube in the morning and come back and your clothes would be gray. When my boogers started turning black, eh, that was a sign. Back then, I'd be biking through London, which was risking my life with all the cars and buses. Now, there are so many bike lanes, you risk your life from the other bikes. The thing is, I could have stayed. I was offered a job to stay on and skip the rest of my studies or finish them later, but I didn't vote that way. I voted to exit. And as soon as I got back to the States, this movie comes out, The Tall Guy, about a lanky, goofy American dude who gets around London by bike. I was like, uh, excuse me, that's me. And he goes on to star in a successful West End show with Rowan Atkinson and fall in love with Emma Thompson. Ha, I was like, wait, wait, can I redo my vote? So why do I care so much about Brexit? That's why. I hope you get a second referendum, Britain. I hope you get a second chance to treat Emma Thompson better than Kenneth Branagh did.